This is the Robo R1 Plus. The Robo 3D company has been around a while. They got started in 2012, and this was their flagship 3D printer design. Now this is an R1 Plus. It has been upgraded over the years from the original R1, but they've kept the same look and feel. When you see an R1, you know it's an R1. The R1 is a Cartesian style machine with a 250 by 225 by 230 millimeter build volume. It has a removable glass heated bed, a Griggs Wade style extruder, a somewhat unique hot end design, it has a part cooling fan, and auto bed leveling enabled by two micro switches, one on each side of the X carriage. Now the design choices made on the R1 does put it a little bit in the old school category, but a lot of it is still relevant today. So let's get started just by taking a look around on this machine. So we have the removable glass heated bed. You can just lift it off, it's just attached with some magnets, and you can pull it out the back. You are limited by the heat bed wires, but it does make it easier to pull out and clean off if you're using something like glue stick or hairspray. And by the way, I do prefer hairspray on this machine. And then we have the Greg's Wade extruder. It's a small gear on the stepper driving a much larger gear to get more torque on the filament. It's the standard spring-loaded type that has a hobbed bolt inside. And we also have a part cooling fan down here. It's an angled 40 millimeter fan, but in my opinion is one of the weakest parts of this printer. It can definitely use some more part cooling. Now this is going to be kind of hard to see, but for their auto bed leveling, they have a micro switch that sets on each side, and the X carriage just kind of floats on top of them. Let me run a sequence and show you what it does. So when it goes to the right side, it lifts up the right switch, telling it when it's too close to the bed. And the same on the left side. It'll lift up that switch and untrigger it and tell it when it's hit the bed. Now the auto bed leveling does work fairly well on this machine after you get everything set up correctly. It takes a little bit to know exactly how to set the X carriage on top of those switches. But the Y carriage does have just enough play in it where the auto bed leveling can sometimes be unpredictable. Now you might have noticed that this printer doesn't come with an LCD screen. You can order one from Robo as an add-on, but by default, it's not going to have one. So to use this printer, you're either going to have to tether to your PC or use something like Octoprint. Now I use Octoprint pretty much exclusively, so it didn't really bother me any, but that's definitely something you're going to want to know going in. Now the biggest things I like about this machine are the auto bed leveling and the build volume. Although the Z volume does get cut back quite a bit by the printer's design. So as you get closer to the top, the filament can bind as well as the wires and cause prints to fail. But as long as you're not printing anything really tall, that's not an issue. Now one of the things I really don't like about this machine is some of the noises that it can make. Now I'm not sure if you can hear this or not, but sometimes when you home the printer or when the print is finished, the fans that are riding on the hot end carriage will resonate onto the bed and then through the case and cause this really annoying whine. Other than the noise and it needing some more part cooling, this is a pretty nice 3D printer and fairly well designed. Now I did order this one as a recertified unit and all it came with was the printer and a small spool of filament. No power cord, no USB cable, no SD card, nothing else. So I did contact support via their website to ask them if this was usual and I never received a reply via email. However, I did call them a couple weeks later got right in on the phone, got my questions answered, and that was that. So support has been fairly good. Now let's take a look at what's actually inside this machine. So when you pop the bottom access panel off, this is what you're dealing with. Your standard 30 amp 12 volt power supply, standard NEMA 17 stepper motors, you have a breakout board for your full size SD card that's cabled to a ramp shield, but has a genuine Arduino underneath it. The ramps does seem to be populated with some A4988 stepper drivers or something close to that. You do get all five, but they're using the usual second extruder position for one of the Z motors. So each Z motor gets its own driver. So that's a tour of the printer, but how's it print? And I have to say right out of the box, it did fairly well. This is the very first Benchy that we printed on the live stream. The Benchy came out pretty good. You can see it does need a lot more part cooling for those overhangs. But all in all, I'd rate it about a 7.
with no changes made to the printer, I printed this out of Linda, and it came out pretty good as well. Minimal stringing, but a pretty nice finish. I also made this dovetail box, and I wanted to show you that the corner lifted up. And that's if you don't get that Z set up just right, it's not going to level correctly, and you're going to get some spots where it's going to lift. Robo uses an M565 command to help you set the Z offset. You have to put this in your start G code. You can look up how to set this on the Robo site, but I found that a Z negative 0.75 is just about right for this machine. So if you don't get that Z offset just right, you're going to get some prints that curl or some prints that have elephant foot because they're stuck down too good. Now, as I was testing this machine, I noticed I was having problems with really small circles. So I did get into Marlin and take a look around. And Marlin is available for this machine on the Robo website, but it is a really old version, and they don't offer an upgrade to any of the newer ones. I found that the jerk setting for this machine was way too high. So I lowered it down to 10 for X and Y, and that seemed to solve all of my small circle problems. So you might want to look into that. Between the low amount of part cooling and the jerk value, the small circles really didn't have a chance. After I got all my settings configured just right, I printed one of these basket boxes. And it's safe to say that this can be a pretty difficult print, even for the best printers, and this one came out pretty much flawless. And that's the Robo R1 Plus in a nutshell. And I have to say, I really do like this printer. With just a few minor tweaks, I was able to get it printing really well. And with a few more parts added, you could probably turn out some pretty amazing 3D prints. Now, would I buy this machine as my daily driver, something I printed on every day? Probably not. And that's only because it's just a little bit too far past its prime. Marlin is way too far back leveled and needs to be updated so we can use a lot of the new features. And probably a few nice to have features need to be installed on the printer itself. Maybe an R1++ version is in order. Robo does make a few more modern versions of 3D printers, although I don't have any experience with those machines yet. This machine does get a few extra bonus points in my book because it's a sub $500 3D printer from a US based company. And that is only given the current 3D printing manufacturing state in the US today. I have not been in contact with Robo on this machine except for one support call. It was purchased with my own funds and all opinions expressed are my own. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, Thanks for watching.